Hi everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today we're looking at the book Slavic Beauties by Christina Novak, a Polish illustrator. And this book has been out for a little while now and I've just managed to get my hands on a copy and it's absolutely beautiful, this book. Not only the illustrations, but the way that it's been made, the production quality, everything. So I'm sure you're gonna be really excited to see this one if you haven't seen it already on all the colouring groups. So the book is hardback. As you can see, it's got a really good hardback to it. Um, it's all full colour on the cover. You can see some thumbnails there of the type of artwork you're going to get inside. We've got a Polish um, sort of blurb on the back of the book and then the English version here. And you can get it from Deco Made, which is a Polish website. And I'll be leaving that link in the description. I've just noticed that I've got pen all over my fingers that I'm getting on the book because <laughs> I've just been doing a different colouring project. But um, you have to ignore that for now. So, Slavic Beauties, as I say, hardback, we open it up, and we've got the introduction from Christina here, again in Polish, but then you turn over, and she has happily and helpfully translated that into English. Now, it's just a little bit about Christina, she's saying that not so long ago she was embroidering, crocheting, knitting, um, and also colouring as well, she was a massive, sort of prolific colourist on Instagram, followed her for a while, um, and she never saw herself as an artist, but then she um, she started getting into colouring books and it kind of drew out her artistic talent and then she decided to try and create some of her own colouring uh, line art and this is the product of that. So I'm sure you'll agree as we go through the book that this lady's talent is absolutely immense and um, I'm just surprised that she didn't have a colouring book out earlier. Uh, so yeah, just a little bit there from Christina. We've then got all of the names of the line art that are in the book. So there are 35 different illustrations with pure line art, so basic line art, you then have an extra five that are grayscale. So starting off, you can see on the right hand side you have the illustration and on the left we have the Polish and the English background of the illustration. So you've got the name of it and also a little bit about uh, the idea and where it came from. So it says, creating this drawing, I accidentally managed to capture what I have in mind when thinking Slavic. Of course, except stereotypical red beads and folk ornaments, in my opinion, above all, it's the close closeness to nature, the ability to eulogize over its beauty and finding happiness in interaction with it, and also the love of simplicity. So it's really nice just to have that little bit of uh, insight and background into the illustrations. Now, looking at the first one, this really does depict the, the rest of what you will see throughout the book. Absolutely stunning, kind of um, shaded illustrations, very, very realistic and lifelike, very along the lines of Mariola Budek, which is one of my favourite illustrators. So if you're into that kind of thing, Momo Girl and all the rest of it, you're going to adore this book. It's absolutely right down my street. I adore these kind of line art um, portraits. So the next one is the Evil Queen. So it says she wanted to, to draw a determined, confident woman who knows what she wants and how to achieve it, just like the Evil Queen Regina from the Once Upon a Time series. And of course, she loves all kinds of beads as well. So you will see this very ornamental, very decorative look to a lot of the ladies in this book. This is Strawberries. I'm not going to read every single, um, you know, caption to go with it, but you can just see. I mean, really, I, I don't know where she's been hiding this talent, but absolutely wonderful. Definitely just jumped straight up to one of my favourite illustrators. It really is my kind of thing down to a T. Now, these illustrations, or most of them, can be bought individually as digital PDFs on her Etsy page. So I'm going to link that below as well so that you can go along and if you can't afford to buy the book or you just wanna print them on your own paper or what have you, you can go along and get most of these illustrations there. We've got a couple of sisters here. We've got the grandfather's terrace. My grandfather used to love grapes. In his house, there was a terrace completely overgrown with vines, so it was impossible to see the garden through it. Thick tangled vines with violet bunches of grapes got stuck in my mind. So these are all really personal to Christina as well. This is um, somebody that Christina met in the colouring community, in fact. This is Ellen, a beautiful princess, cuddling her owl friend. So you've also got a couple of animals and a lot of nature incorporated into these illustrations as well. 
So this one's really interesting. It says for Asha. Asha brought my attention to the fact that it's very rare to see women with curves in colouring books, which I have said for such a long time now. Thanks to her, you can find all kind of beauties in my book. I oftentimes say that I wish there were more, um, more curvy girls, more um, minorities, disabled women, disabled men, you know, whatever, just minorities depicted in colouring books because it's so often that we see these beautiful, skinny, thin, um, lathe, you know, lathe or lithe? <laughs> I think lathe is a, is a woodworking tool. Anyway, uh, you know what I mean. So I think it's really nice to see different body shapes and types um, depicted in colouring books. So I really, really love this one. Uh, this is Alenka, I think. Um, it's a Swedish or a Polish Swedish war novel that was made into a movie and it, I think it's a Christmas movie and uh, this is one of the characters from there so you can see we've got a lovely kind of fur shawl or stole around her. This is a witch. Um, she wanted her to look like a Slavic witch who lives together with her crow somewhere deep in the forest. That would be really cool with a nighttime background. This is Rowan Berries, which is the front cover image. Yes, it is. Uh, so you've got your Rowan Berry crown there. Again, loads and loads of hair and skin to practice on. You know I love colouring my portraits. Here we've got a little child in this one as well. So the uh, illustrator, Christina, says that her two sons um, are, she's very proud of them. She can't imagine her life without them. And she had to draw a picture with an attempt to capture all of the maternal feelings that you get with being a mom. So that's really sweet. This is Orchard, again, a little bit of a larger lady, loving it. My grandparents, uh, my husband's grandparents have a big orchard full of apple trees. When we visit them at the end of summer, all their branches are bending under the weight of the apples. What a gorgeous kind of vision uh, and image they're painted. That is such a beautiful view. So you can see the apples, really beautiful close up of this lady here. This is for Eva. It says that during the summer, a little black cat started to occupy her garden. With all his charm, he won our hearts and became a family member. Therefore, it was a particular pleasure to meet uh, Eva's request to draw another picture with this animal. So you've got a nice little cat there. Again, lots of beads and decorative things and some flowers as well. Little friends. Younger son is currently going through a phase. Fascinated with all the living creatures in our garden, he brings home snails and ladybugs and demands them to be fed. You can imagine, can't you? I remember when my little boys used to do that. Before I had my second son, my first one, he was lonely, bless him. He used to get worms out of the ground and he would put them on the side and say, these are my friends. Oh, it was so sweet. So I had to make a little brother for him, obviously. Um, we've got haymaking really nice sort of natural tumbling curls with the wildflower bouquet in the hair again another nice little frame around here too this is for david or i'm not sure how you would say that in polish david david no i don't know but um i really love how the cherries are just hanging over this lady's ears here making some uh, decorative earrings and uh, really liking the hairstyle on this as well like this weaved um hairstyle at the top of her head there We've got mouse tower. So again, we've got some animals on here. This is quite a simple one. There's not too much going on. You've just got a bit of a um, kind of, not fleur de lis. I always get mixed up with this. You know, you know what they are. Um, but yeah, again, beautiful, beautiful ladies. We've got Bingo because Christina used to have a dog named Bingo when she was a child. So uh, yeah, if you've got a dog, you're going to adore colouring this one. Maybe make it in the colours of your dog. This is gentleness. What a gorgeous illustration. The eyes that she's able to draw, it really looks out of the book towards you. Um, this is the uh, jewellery with a dandelion inside. So that's really sweet. It's like having a, a wish on you all the time, keeping your wish close to you. Really liking this sort of lace frilly detail as well on the, um, the hood. This is a squirrel. Until I met my husband, I used to live in a little town at the edge of the forest. That's why I had an opportunity to see these lovely creatures every day. So again, drawing lots of inspiration from Christina's life and her past. We've got a cow here. So this is all about the homestead. And I think that's really important in Polish life, farming and things like that, agriculture. So it's nice to have a little window, literally, into that kind of, um, that kind of lifestyle. 
thoughtful. I wanted the women in my book to look varied, which they really do, so I decided to draw a girl with short hair. Later it turned out that she resembles her mum, how sweet. So again, yes, I do feel there is lots and lots of variation in this book, not something you often find with portrait books. A lot of them can look really samey, same, same facial expression, uh, very similar hair, very similar body type, etc, etc. These are all really different. So this is gold duck, little sweet little duck there in her hands, loads of hair to colour on that one and a bit more of a full body shot. Archeress, so if you like your fantasy colouring, your mythological stuff, I'm sure you'd be able to do a great job with this. So in this particular Slavic beauty, Christina wants to capture bravery, self-confidence and determination, which I think she has definitely succeeded in doing. Again, we've got another larger lady here. My friend, uh, this is, oh, I don't know how you'd say this. Yayanka? I don't know. <laughs> uh, her friend David saw her for the first time. He instantly named her Yayanka, or what, however you say it. It's a character from a Polish historical novel, and uh, she had an ability to crack nuts in an interesting way. Hmm. <laughs> Wonder how she would crack the nuts. Let's have a look at this illustration. I'll let your imagination do the work there. Oh, here's the one that I've coloured, Saved by the Bell. So this is Stepmother. Probably it's not very trendy nowadays, Christina says, but I'm a fan of Polish historical trilogy written by Henrik. Not even going to try and pronounce that name. So her next inspiration that she found uh, was in this movie here. A very similar scarf was worn by the guardian of Helena, one of the main characters. So here we go. This is one that I've coloured, as you can see. I decided to use my luminance pencils. I broke those out for a while. I uh, haven't had them out for a while. Um and really, really enjoyed colouring with them, actually. I'm so stuck on colouring with Prismas and Polychromos. I always forget about all my other different colouring pencil sets, and I really need to start using them a lot more. Started using our teasers a lot more, uh, the Black Widows as well, but I really wanted to try and use my luminance um, on a whole page. So everything on this page is luminance, except for the dark purple ombre gradient background, which is Neo Colours. So it's all Caran Dash products on this page. So I'm really, really, really pleased with how this turned out. It, it really surpassed my expectations and I'm currently decorating. As you know, I moved house about six, seven months ago. So I've decorated my bedroom in Moroccan um, colours, Moroccan. It's sort of a mishmash with Moroccan and Middle Eastern. So I've got loads of orange, red and purple in my room with little lanterns and decorative light shades and things like that. And this, I think, is going to be absolutely perfect, framed and displayed in my bedroom because it really just fits with the theme and all of the colours and everything. It looks very Arabian and, uh, yeah, just love it. So, yeah, again, really pleased with how this turned out. Uh, had a lot of comments on social media since I posted this saying, how do you get your Neo colours to look so solid? Um, I did post a video about this with the lion that I did from a Kirby Roseanne book. And really, the trick with Neo colours is you need to layer them. So the first layer that I put down looked absolutely nothing like this. Very, very streaky indeed. Then I waited for it to dry, put another layer on, wait for it to dry, put another layer on. Usually three layers does it. This was three layers, but you can keep building if it's not good enough. And uh, yeah, that's the trick really. But I tried to make it look, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but uh, like an ombre. So it starts off with a very deep dark purple at the top and it sort of gradiates down to a more pinkish, lighter purple. Um, but yeah, everything else was done with luminance and yeah, I just, I adore it. So this is, tell me, fields with gold, fields with gold wheat is a beautiful view, especially if you can spot some poppies and cornflowers here and there. So just imagining a meadow with this one, loads of flowers, wheat stalks, corn stalks, etc. This is for Sandra, another wonderful person from the colouring community who gave Christina the idea for this picture and suggested that she draw a frog. So um, you've got the frog sat on top of her head. This girl's looking very, very surprised uh, to find him there. And uh, it does make sense because Christina says that she's, uh, she's not very fond of frogs and it makes her squeal when she sees them. This is Emma. So again, the Once Upon a Time series is mentioned. Uh, this is Brave Princess. So you can see she's got her sword. She's got her flowing hair. And uh, yeah, again, another one for you fantasy and mythological colorists. This is uh, another drawing inspired by Henry that we heard earlier. This is a character named Basienka, maybe. <laughs> a beautiful and brave girl who had to escape from the threat on a horse. And I really like how this one is contained in this very delicate border. 
So this is Slavic Beauty. This was Christina's first drawing, the beginning of everything. Very, very special drawing to her because thanks to this picture, you can hold your book, uh, this book in your hands right now. So this was her first sort of foray into drawing, colouring pages. And can you believe it? Really, honestly, if I tried to, <laughs> if I attempted to draw something for the first time, it would not turn out anywhere like this one. But um, yeah, I'm so glad that she decided to start drawing self-portrait so here she is Christina and she's saying that she consciously sorry unconsciously constantly touches and plays with her hair which I do all the time you know and you've not this is a bit TMI well it's not really TMI but you know you've not washed your hair for a few days getting a bit greasy I just sit there twiddling it twiddling it twiddling it I plait it I unplait it I'm constantly playing with my hair that's probably why I uh, have loads and loads of split ends but anyway there's Christina now we're moving on to the last images in the book, which are the grayscale images. Now these are ones you've seen previously further up in the book, but they are grayscale. So there's a little bit of grayscale in here for those of you who love colouring grayscale. And also if you haven't tried your hand at it yet, you've got a few little images for you to have a go with in the back. So we've got that cover image there. We've got the archeress. And finally, we've got the mouse tower. And that's it. So at the back of the book, you will find all of the places online that you can go and find Christina. Her name on Instagram and everywhere is Ojki Popart. I think <laughs> Ojki Popart. Uh, so go and find her and follow her everywhere. You've then got all of your copyright bits and bobs and that is it. Now, physically, the book, you can see how thick this is. I mean, it's got, what, 40 illustrations, but it is incredibly thick for 40 illustrations. And that is because the paper is heavy weight. It is very, very, very thick. As you can see, you know, when I used uh, the Neo colours, using lots of water between layers, absolutely zero, you know, bleed through or anything. It is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous paper. Um, honestly, probably some of the best paper I've come across for colouring on. It has a very, very light tooth. It's not uh, smooth at all, but it's not rough and too sort of toothy for pencils um, to look, you know, smooth on. It is a perfect paper stock. I adore it. Um, what else can I say? It has beautiful sort of very, very light ivory pages. I wouldn't say that they're pure white. I, I think they're light ivory, um, but not creamy or anything. And just, I'm just so impressed. This is one of my favourite colouring books now, I have to say, um, you know, and it's not something that I say a lot because I, I have reviewed a lot and lot of colouring books over the five years that I've been doing this. And uh, this has just gone straight to the top of my list, really. So uh, you'll want to know where to get this from. <laughs> now you can get it. Where is my little bit of paper telling me all of the prices and things? It's gone missing. Okay, so you can get it on the link that I'm going to put in the description below. Um, and the prices, I've just found it. So euros, 15.99. So if you live in the EU, that's how much it's going to cost you. If you live in the UK, it's £14.17. pence, And in the US currently, it's $17.99. So these are all numbered. They're limited numbered editions. Now if I can find the bit, here we go. So they're all signed as well. You'll get a signed copy from Christina and there is your number. So there's 850 copies. This is number 462. So they're all limited edition and signed. Um, I think the price for this is perfect. Um, to be honest with you, I would have expected it to be well into the £20, £30 mark because of the quality, uh, both of the illustrations and of how it's been made. So to say that you can get this book for 14 quid in the UK, I think it's really, really, really a bargain. Um... Obviously, you've got postage on top of that, which I can't elaborate on because you're all going to live in different countries, but it's all listed there on the website, uh, wherever you are. So, yes, absolutely adore this book. I am sure that you guys will, too. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.